Um, just just picking up a mix a missed call on the Irvington Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses phone that you called a couple of hours ago. Sorry, which did which congregation did you say, Elgin? No, Irvin. Irvin. Irving. Yes, Irving. Yes, yeah. I called a little while ago. Um, I can if, help you. If it's possible to help, I'm reading Enjoy Life Forever. I've got some things I don't understand. Sure. Uh, right, I'll just get my copy and my Bible. Uh, thank you. Um, it's Enjoy Life Forever. It's Lesson 18 and 19. Eighteen and nineteen of Enjoy Life Forever. I notice that the phrase "real Christians" is used repeatedly in the book. Um, for instance, lesson eighteen. Let's give me a second. I'm just trying again. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Lesson eighteen is titled "How to Identify Real Christians." And I noticed in this book, the phrase real Christians is used repeatedly throughout lessons 18 and lessons 19. OK. Um, paragraph one. Do you mind if I just read it, please? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll throw it in front of me. Thank you. Christians are disciples or followers of Jesus Christ. How do they prove that they are Jesus' disciples? He said, if you remain in my word, you are really my disciples. This means that real Christians must obey Jesus' teaching. Just as Jesus relied on the scriptures to support his teachings, real Christians base their beliefs on the Bible. Okay. But in the past, Jehovah's Witnesses had very different teachings to the teachings you have today. I mean, for instance, Pastor Russell taught that Jesus Christ became Almighty God at his resurrection. That's in Brian Bible Teacher's Manual, page 4454. And The Finished Mystery, published posthumously a year under his death. I've got both of these books. Page 15 and page 240 say that Jesus Christ is Almighty God, meaning he became Almighty God at his resurrection. Would that mean that the early Jehovah's Witnesses were not real Christians because they didn't teach what you teach today? Um, I, need, I need to do a little bit of research on that because um, these publications are very old uh, and I'm not particularly f familiar with them. Could you just give me the references again, please? Yes, Berean Bible Teacher's Manual, page 454. Sorry, start again, please. Berean Bible Teacher's Manual. Page I don't get the word. I'm really, really sorry. Berean. Can you spell that? Yeah, Berea, no. as in the Book of Acts, they were more noble in Berea oh, than in Thessalonica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, B e r e a n. Mm -hmm. Berean Bible Teachers Manual, page four hundred and fifty-four. The Finished Mystery, page fifteen yeah. and page two forty, yeah. say that Jesus Christ is Almighty God, meaning He became Almighty God at His resurrection. Slow down a wee bit. <laughs> uh, I'm writing this down, so it's Berean Bible Teachers, uh, page 454. Yeah. And the next reference was, you were saying? The Finished Mystery. Published, uh, published in 1917. Uh -huh. And page 15 and page 240 state that Jesus Christ is Almighty God, meaning he became Almighty God at his resurrection. So, if true Christians, if sorry, if real Christians base their belief on the Bible, yeah, and you don't believe what Russell taught, in fact, you don't believe a lot of what Rutherford or Nathan Homanor or Fred Franz taught, wouldn't that mean that they're not real Christians? The only real Christians are people who believe exactly what you teach now in 2023. Anyone who deviates in any way from that can't be a real Christian, according to your, your book. OK. So you, you're referring to the, the Lesson 18 and 19 now, then, yeah? I, I read from Lesson 18, Paragraph 1. Yeah. Right. Just as Jesus relied on the Scriptures to support his teachings, real Christians yeah. base their beliefs on the Bible. Well, yeah. Russell used the pyramid to come up with his Bible prophecies that Armageddon was going to happen in 1914. They did indeed, yeah. 
yeah. Um, Russell uh, taught all sorts of, you know, crazy things. Um, mm -hmm. um, and how can he be a real Christian if his teachings are not based on the Bible? Uh, Wouldn't that mean that there's a that most Jehovah's Witnesses actually in the entire history of the Watchtower were never real Christians? They died, they lived and they died as false Christians because they didn't teach what you teach today. If today is the exact right teachings of the Bible, and I put that hypothetically because I might not agree with that, you need to prove it. Yeah. Okay. You know, if um, if if you say Bible truth is what's taught by the Watched our Bible and Tract Society in the year 2023. Well, what about somebody who lived 20 years ago? They wouldn't believe in the overlapping generation, would they? So they'd have wrong views of the overlapping generation. They'd have wrong views of the faithful and discreet slave because 20 years ago they believed that a hundred and you know thousands of people around the world made up the faithful and discreet slave. Today, you teach it's only the governing body. So wouldn't that mean that 20 years ago, all Jehovah's Witnesses were not real Christians? They were false Christians because they didn't teach what you teach today in 2023. And if you change your beliefs, which you probably will, in 10 years' time, in 10 years' time, you'll be teaching something totally different. Yeah, you'll probably change the generation teaching again and you make other changes, wouldn't that mean that every Jehovah's Witness, including yourself today, is actually a false Christian? Because you're not going to be teaching what they're going to be teaching in 10 years' time in 2033. Well, it's complicated questions you ask. Um, I can't answer them just right immediately. Um, so let's, let's just start off with your good name, sir. Yeah, my name is Robert. Robert, thanks very much for that, yes, Robert. Sir. Now, Robert, you've got us uh, quite a lot of knowledge about Jehovah's Witnesses over the many years, so have you been associated with the uh, congregations at some point? In time? Never, never, but I've got quite a lot of your books. I bought okay. over the years books from book dealers, um, some very, very cheaply, some were a bit expensive, but uh -huh. I bought books from book dealers. I've got a very large library of Jehovah's Witness books including a lot of stuff by Russell and Rutherford. Uh-huh. And is, is your interest to, um, <clears throat> to further your knowledge in what's written in Scripture uh, in order to, how can I say this, in order to uh, just expand your knowledge and understanding of what's been written? No, no, I, I, want, to obey, I want to obey God and do the will of God. Um, I'm a former Pentecostal. I was involved with the Oneness Movement, the Apostolic Movement, which is a massive movement, far larger than Jehovah's Witnesses and, and Mormons combined. It's many, okay. many tens of millions within Pentecostalism. And I was involved in that in the 1980s, and I left. And I now uh -huh. no longer have anything to do with any church or religious group at all. Okay. All right. Um, so... Let me try and just give you this now because I'm on a short time span here because our meeting starts just very shortly in the Urban Kingdom Hall uh, where I've got to head to very shortly. Um, what I would prefer to do, if I can, if you don't mind, is to get that over and done with and then perhaps call you back in the evening. Yes. Um, it's, I, it's convenient for me, however, to send me a text, make it clear who you are, and give me a precise exact time, and sure. you call at that time. I don't have a family, so I don't care what time you want to speak to me at. But, you know, I'm not sitting by the phone waiting for you. It's no good saying to me, I'll call you sometime on Tuesday afternoon. Well, I'm not going to be meekly sitting by the phone at two o'clock. And, and, no. and waiting till six o'clock for you to call. You give me a precise exact time and you call at that exact time. Okay. Can, well, can convenient to you. Uh, Monday is difficult for me. I can speak sometimes Monday morning, but I can never speak from Monday lunchtime onwards. How about this evening at seven o'clock? 
Yep, that's fine. Okay, Robert, I'll give you a buzz at 7 o'clock tonight and hopefully have some um, some answers that I can give you yes. to, to satisfy you on these questions, if that's okay. Yes, um, just one very brief thing. Chapter 19 on page 79, the first Thank line says, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Hang on a minute, let me just get back there. Chapter 19. Yeah, I'm just getting there. Before okay. the first paragraph, the introduction, <coughs> it says, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Are you saying that there are no real Christians in other groups, like the Baptists, the Methodists, the Anglicans? Well, it's, it's on the terminology of Christians, and who is a real Christian, which comes from the, the previous... That, that's the previous what I'm chapter. asking you. That's what I'm uh -huh. asking you. I think Jehovah's Witnesses teach that only they are real Christians because in a watchtower, I've done a lot of research on JW.org, many hours, the watchtower for the 15th of November 1981, page 21, says, quote, and whilst now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organisation for salvation. So I think the definition is that real Christians are people who've gone to Jehovah's organization. But of course, Jehovah's organization keeps changing constantly what they believe. So I think that what you actually believe is actually not really relevant to how you define a real Christian. Um, I think it's a matter of going to Jehovah's organization. At least that's the way that I would see it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. Not at all. We'll discuss that a wee while in the, in the evening then, on chapter 18 and 19, and we'll see if we can clear up some of that for you, OK? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for your time. Right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.